And what will the long-term consequences of this dam be? Ethiopia's multi-billion dollar hydroelectric dam on the Blue Nile pose an existential threat for generations to come. Egyptians are as well. We are seeking peaceful cooperation. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam rises, a symbol of progress and power. As tensions escalate, delve into the intricate interplay of politics, diplomacy, and the seismic changes poised to reshape the region. Welcome to the life-changing battle for this 5BN Megadom. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, is an immense project boasting impressive dimensions and potential benefits for Ethiopia. The reservoir created by the dam will cover an area approximately equivalent to the size of London while the dam's height will be twice that of the Golden Gate Bridge deck. This mega-project, which has been in development for decades, is a key component of Ethiopia's economic growth strategy, aiming to uplift millions of people from poverty through increased electricity generation. However, it also carries the potential to escalate tensions and conflicts in the region due to its impact on the Nile River's water flow and distribution. As the largest dam in Africa, the GERD is classified as a mega dam. Upon its completion, it is projected to generate more than 5,000 megawatts of electricity, significantly exceeding Ethiopia's current energy output. The dam's reservoir will hold an impressive 74 billion cubic meters of water. The scale of this project is truly awe-inspiring. The dam itself is constructed using a massive 10 million cubic meters of roller-compacted concrete. It is designed to incorporate two power stations three spillways, and a saddle dam. The primary dam structure will reach a depth of 145 meters and stretch over a length of 1.7 kilometers. The supporting saddle dam, which contributes to the main structure's stability, will be an astonishing 4.8 kilometers in length and stand at a height of 45 meters. Two open-air power stations will be established on opposite riverbanks equipped with the capability to generate approximately 2,000 to 3,700 megawatts of power. The inception of a project as colossal as this sets the precedent for the entire endeavor. In 2013, a seemingly casual yet pivotal step marked the commencement of this journey, the diversion of the Blue Nile River. Although this action might sound dramatic, it is a routine practice in dam construction. The procedure operates as follows. While most dams are constructed over rivers, the necessity of a dry working environment for concrete pouring necessitates the creation of divergent channels or tunnels adjacent to the dam's designated location during its construction. In scenarios involving solid rock, explosives are often employed to create a passage, while softer earth and rocks are excavated to facilitate the process. Once a dry area is available for the workforce, the process of laying foundations commences. These foundations must possess robust structural integrity, to withstand not only the weight of the dam, but also the substantial water pressures exerted upon it. With a planned depth of 145 meters, comparable to the height of a skyscraper, the Renaissance Dam is poised to contain an astounding 74 billion cubic meters of water, which will, in turn, exert substantial pressure. Before we plunge into the depths of this amazing journey, do us a favor, tap that like button and subscribe. It's not as powerful as a dam release, but it sure helps our channel flow smoothly. Don't worry, we won't flood your feed. Well, not too much. Now let's sail right back into the current of our captivating exploration. The necessity of impenetrable foundations cannot be overstated, as even the slightest leakage would be detrimental. Consequently, meticulous testing of the underlying soil and rock formations is undertaken to ensure their robustness. When existing materials prove inadequate, they are occasionally substituted with sturdier alternatives, ensuring the foundation's resilience. Once the dam reaches its culmination and is firmly in place, the diversion channels that once redirected the river's flow are securely sealed. This action initiates the accumulation of water, culminating in the formation of a reservoir behind the dam's formidable structure, a phenomenon reminiscent of the Hoover Dam's creation on the border between Arizona and Nevada. The process of controlled water release through designated openings in the dam frequently harnessed to generate hydroelectric power becomes a pivotal operational procedure. Given the monumental scale of the Renaissance Dam, 
it stands to reason that dedicated on-site concrete batching plants have been meticulously established close to the active construction site. This strategic decision significantly bolsters operational efficiency while ensuring meticulous control over the timely delivery of construction materials. This level of meticulous control is particularly indispensable during extensive concrete pouring operations, where precise coordination is paramount. However, a significant proportion of the construction nuances of the Renaissance Dam project remain shrouded in secrecy. This veil of confidentiality predominantly arises from the intricate interplay of political dynamics that encapsulate the project. Nestled upon the Blue Nile, a mere 30 kilometers upstream from the Sudanese border, the dam's placement has ignited vehement debates surrounding the ownership rights over the Nile's vital waters. This debate resonates more profoundly when considering the ramifications downstream. Further downstream rests Egypt, a nation whose existence is inextricably linked with the Nile's resources. The Nile, to Egypt, is more than just a river. It's the lifeblood of a civilization that has flourished along its banks for millennia. In the grand tapestry of geopolitics, the Renaissance Dam is a complex thread, woven into the intricate narrative of regional power dynamics and resource allocation. While its engineering marvel is undeniable, the dam's impact extends far beyond its concrete and steel. It reaches into the realms of politics, diplomacy, economics, and the future of the region itself. An astonishing 85% of Ethiopia's water supply originates from this single source, highlighting the immense significance of the Nile. Furthermore, approximately 95% of the country's population resides within proximity to this renowned river. Canals stemming from the Nile are instrumental in irrigating farms, sustaining cities, supporting agriculture, and facilitating fishing. For millennia, the Nile has infused vitality into this desert region, underpinning its survival. Given that an overwhelming majority of Egypt's water resources, a staggering 85%, is drawn from the Nile, and close to 95% of the nation's populace dwells in the vicinity of the river. The Nile holds profound importance for Egypt as well. The intricate network of canals stemming from the Nile plays a pivotal role at irrigating farmlands, providing for urban areas, fostering agricultural activities, and supporting the fishing industry. Throughout history, the Nile has been the lifeblood of this desert region, ensuring its sustenance. Amidst the prevailing tensions in the region, this dam has emerged as a focal point. Reports have even indicated that Egypt was willing to consider military action, including bombing, to safeguard its interests in the Nile. Given this context, the question arises, why would Ethiopia put itself at risk of potential conflict for the sake of a grand dam? And that's a wrap for today's video. If you found this journey as intriguing as a river's meandering course, remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. And guess what? Our next video is just around the bend. It's all about the bizarre reasons why New York's billionaire's row is half empty. You won't want to miss that, so stay tuned, and until next time, keep exploring.